Welcome to the 24 UK podcast uh, here in LA. We are lucky enough to be joined by former executive producer and director of 24 from seasons 1 to 7, Mr. John Kassar. Pleasure to have you Thank on. Thank you for having me. John. Thanks for coming to my world. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's lovely. <laughs> and a nice, nice day today as well. Yeah, we got a good day. You're yeah. lucky. Good stuff. Um, jumping straight in here with uh, with 24 and everything. Obviously, you're no longer involved anymore. Uh, we recently saw Joseph Hodges, former production designer, tweet uh, that watching 24 was like seeing uh, a former flame with a new boyfriend. Yeah, so we saw that tweet. That? It, it's actually interesting. Yeah, that is a, that is a way to see it. And, and I mean, for both Joseph and I, it's a whole new experience because for the first time in seven years, we are watching it exactly like an audience member. And I, I really made an effort this year not to visit set and you know even though I hang out with all those people I don't really talk about I try not to they always are trying and I'm like no don't talk to me I don't want to know I'm like like my wife used to be uh, so I'm really looking at it like with fresh eyes and it's, it's kind of fun to watch that way it really is so has it affected the way you see the show uh, well, I think a little bit. The, the, the biggest problem, of course, is still, I'm still, I, I know the inside workings of it. I, I know a lot of sort of what's going to happen story-wise just because I've been with them for so long. Yeah. And I could see a lot, of, a lot of that coming. So it's hard to be a complete audience member, but it's still, there's still enough surprises that it's fun for me. Like, I hadn't seen the new set until I saw it on camera. So that, that's kind of fun, you know. It's kind of fun so, to see everything coming at you new. Did you call yourself a big fan still then, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, it's funny. It, People think that because you're on the show, it automatically makes you a fan of the show. And that's not, that's not yeah. necessarily true. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a very long career, I've done a lot of shows, and there's only a handful that I, that I could say I was a fan of. Even though I directed, you know, many of them for many years, you know, 15 years worth of television shows, there's only a handful that I really love to watch. Nikita was one of them, and 24 is, is another one, obviously. So I'm still a fan of the show, whether I worked on it or not. I, I, love, I love the idea of the show. I love watching Kiefer. I love watching the, the levels of performance they always get from all their actors. So it, it's fun for me to watch. So what did you think to the start of season eight? I mean, we've seen four episodes back in the UK. Uh, how did you find it? I like it. I like it. I, I think it's a, it's a little slower, which I like. I mean, I was always lobbying to sort of bring it back to the beginning, mm. which, well, which they've, like, they've done a little bit of, you know, like yeah. season one. Uh, you know, there are things that you're going to bump into that you're not going to like, and some of the repetition is, is, you know, almost the exact same things that the audience complains about. I'm, I'm now an audience member, and I'm complaining too, going, hey, I saw that scene already. So, <laughs> But, you know, in defense of the writers, it's incredibly difficult. They've, they've written... You know, it's going to get up to almost two, 200 hours by the end of this year. I think it's a couple short. And, you know, if you think about that just for a second, and, and think about it from a storytelling point of view. You're trying to tell a 200-hour story. Now, most feature films can't do a sequel without completely repeating the first episode. Okay, so that's two hours. They've done two hours. They do their sequel. It's exactly the same. T1 and T2, perfect example. They're the same movie. One had more money than the other, but they're the exact same Oh, and Arnie was good in So those, Right, so. exactly. And so now you're jumping ahead and you're, you're you know, into the 200th hour of telling virtually the same story it's a hell of a challenge and and one of the things actually I was just writing on on one of the boards today is that the only solution to that is to make it so absolutely different that then you're going to alienate a whole bunch of other people so those yeah. people that are complaining about being the same, if you go right out there and make it completely different, and Jack works, you know, at a Walmart. I mean, I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but but still, whatever it might be, Jack might be a cop in New York. Mm. You know, that, let's yeah. say that's the you know that's the difference. Now you're getting a bunch of people that are pissed off because he's not fighting the terrorists. You don't have CTU. There's no place for Chloe anymore. So so you really got to be careful. I mean, we bumped into it just last year with the the seventh year with with the FBI. I yeah. mean, you know, that was a great opportunity for us to tell complete different stories. You were dealing with a bunch of people that knew didn't know who Jack was. So that part of the story was great. You had Jack and Renee running together. She was, you know, the, the by the book FBI and he was the break the rules CTU. So that was a and that worked out fantastic for us. Yeah. But if you get on the boards, mm. people were really upset that CTU was going. So yeah. upset that they brought it back. So you you're kind of you're caught. You're caught in the middle of changing it drastically and trying to keep, you know, people happy with what they love in the show, which is Jack Bauer fighting terrorism. You know, that's the bottom line. So talk about uh, Renee Walker's character. Do you like the way the direction of her character is going? And well, do you think the, the Russian backstory is actually viable? 
Well, it, it's viable. That's a whole other story. Do I like where it's going? Yes. Yeah. It, it's just fun to watch. And I mean, Annie's got such a fantastic range as an actress that I'm really happy they gave her something to, to hook into, you know? And so that part of it is exciting for me. The Russian backstory, I mean, look, we pull this kind of stuff out all the time. That's what the writers do. Yeah. You don't know the backstory, so we can play with it the way, the way we want. And to make new storylines, and that's what they've done, you know? Uh, it's a little reminiscent of two. I mean, it's... It's virtually Jack trying to get in with the Mexican, you know, mob. It, it had the same, yeah, you know, it, or so. sorry, not not the Mexican mob when he was trying to get in with those guys undercover. It's a very had a lot of scenario, very, very it? similar yeah. scenario. And again, you're doing television. It's about similar scenarios, and so you're going to bump into a few of them. But I prefer what they did to, let's say, the alternative. That's that's the problem with a lot of this is that people don't see what the alternative is. So as much as they really hated that Tony became who he became, yeah. like the fans still, I think. Majority wise, we're really happy with what happened to Tony. If you think about the alternative, if you think about that Tony just worked at CTU for seven years in a row, right. you would hate that yeah. character. <laughs> a and the and the and the actor would be ready to kill himself because he'd have nothing to do. But you know, Jack, watch out for Jack. You know, we we could see somebody on this satellite. I mean, and that's kind of Chloe's job, and that's what Chloe's done all those years. So that's the problem with keeping people around. You know, one of the reasons, you know, the wife got killed, I think, I don't know this for a fact, but, you know, you're looking at your first year, she played an intricate part, Terry was an intricate part of one, now you go into two, what are you going to do with her? You know, we got Kim criticism Kim. enough with Kim getting yeah. into trouble. What are you going to do with the Kim? What are you going to do with the wife? Put her in trouble again? Yeah. And if you don't, what is she doing? Mm. She's sitting at home going, when are you coming home for supper? <laughs> you know, you've said it was an hour, you're still there. I mean, <laughs> what is she doing? So, so... A lot of the times when you think about, wow, they really change the characters, you got to kind of move ahead and say, okay, if they didn't, what would have they have done? So I guess back to the question, if you didn't do that to Annie, then she's just another FBI agent. Sure. Does she come back and do the same thing she did last year? Jack, don't do this. You're out of line. I mean, bored. So this was a nice change. Yeah, you're right with the comparison of two. Uh when Jack obviously cut off the, the yeah, witness's head. That was a fan, actually, yeah. so I'm not going to take credit for that. But <laughs> yeah. It was a fan that actually outlined step by step, and it was like, ooh, that's scarily the same. But, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, Jack had lost Terry and had been driven to kind of, right. you know, a darker side of himself, right. and he was willing to go that far to do the same thing. Exactly. Rene, to a certain extent, lost Larry, yeah. and it's so now she's same, willing same to... Same. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's for repetition, but... I think it's actually a great thing to see that repetition and yeah. see the characters. Well, because she way. is, she is going, you know, she's going down the same very dark road that he did. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. she, you know, she, he. I mean, corrupt is maybe not the right word, but it is the right word. That's exactly what happened. Mm. He's corrupted her mm. into the way he works. Mm. You know, she was like so by the book and squeaky clean, and she's she's really gone over all the way to his side now. Even, even that it's made him uncomfortable, which is kind of <laughs> kind of interesting. That's yeah. a different twist, yeah. you know. Have you got a favorite new character? Uh, my favorite new character. Oh, I think I think Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. As uh, Cole, I guess his name mm, is. Cole, I don't know Cole, his names yeah. yet. But uh, fantastic. Yeah, and I was Rick. actually one of the ones online when everybody was like poo-pooing the idea that he was on the show. And I kept saying, you know, I like the guy. I mean, I, I wish I was there directing, put it that way, because I've always been a big fan of his. And I know he kind of went the teen romantic route yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Scooby-Doo Scooby route. Yeah. But he, he always had, uh, I could tell that there was something there that I liked about him. And, uh, you know, he's proven me right. He's, yeah. he's doing a great job. So I think he's my favorite new character. 